Pixel Explorations is a comic available for free and in four different languages, German, French, English and Luxembourgish. It features eight different stories about science and research in Luxembourg. You can follow the journey of a water molecule, take a ride into your intestines and also discover the magic of math. But it's also about so much more. It's about role models, women in science, empowerment, solar cells, video games, allergies, and so on. Science meets art. That's the motto behind Luxplorations. So the comics have been produced in collaboration between local scientists and researchers, as well as Luxembourgish comic artists. First, let's answer the question why we did science comics at all. So this comics gives us already some answers. It's, about, it's, it's created by Veronika Mischitz, a science comic illustrator, who we asked as a com science comic expert to be part of our team, as a lecturer, as well as one of the two mentors involved. Today, we will invite Jessica Burton here. So she's the second mentor for a science comic project. She will join us virtually from the comfort of her home. So Jessica Burton has a master's degree in comic studies from the University of Dundee and is currently working at Luxembourg Center for Contemporary and Digital History, also known as the C2DH. There she is um, in her PhD. She is um, studying the relationship between American and European comics in the 1960s. Uh, the last point that I wanted to mention is that apart from being a comic passionate, you also um, former comic editor and worked for Titan Comics. So hello Jessica again, thank you for joining us today. No worries, happy to be here. <laughs> so tell us, why science comics? Well, science and comics are actually the perfect combination because comics allow every individual reader a unique experience. What is called the gutter is the space between the panels and that means that it is our imagination that fills those gaps. So that means that every single comic experience is completely unique, which means that everybody takes a different understanding from reading a comics page. So why do we add science into this mix? This is because comics allow you to understand science at your own pace in your own way. It is such a perfect combination because comics can be so educational and at the same time they allow you to understand things in your own way, in your own pace, using your own imagination and to see things represented visually means that you also have a different connection in your brain to how the science works. And what's the aim of Luxplorations? Well, Luxplorations is aiming first and foremost to make science fun, to showcase exactly what it is our talented scientists do at Luxembourg and show just the range of how much work goes on at the university with the research because I'm sure many people wouldn't wouldn't understand just how varied our research here can be. Um, and we particularly wanted to aim this at a high school audience because we wanted to interest people who might be curious about a career in research to, to show the sort of inner workings of how that, that can happen. And how does Samara and Wiseau come into play? So how, oh, what's so their role? Samara and Wiseau are some of my favourite creations I think I've ever worked on. <laughs> I would love to get giant posters of them here someday. Um, but the idea of Samara and Wiseau was actually came from the artists that we were working with. They decided and we agreed from the organisational team that it would be a really nice idea to have a thread that runs through all the stories so that we can link them all together and for potential future volumes. So the idea was to have a character that would appear in all of the comics so that you can see it as either one story, lots of separate stories, but there is a link between them all. And we also really liked the idea of Samara being from a different planet so that she wasn't burdened with human problems, let's say. She <laughs> had to discover everything. We don't see this yet in the comics, but she had to learn how to eat, for example. She had to learn how to maintain her state in this gravity. And I think it's very, very interesting. One thing we also wanted to do in this was to show that Samara actually didn't understand the concept of gender. 
So when she, and we, were, we call her she because she decided to identify as she for her time on Earth because that's generally what we do on Earth. So yeah, it was, just a, it was just a really nice way of linking all the stories, but also to bring up some issues that we wanted to raise. Thank you so much, Jessica. <laughs> One of the people involved in this comic production is Sonja Fixema. She's also here today. So hello, Sonja. Thank you for being here today. First of all, Let's introduce you. So you're one of the 23 doctoral candidates involved in this project. And you're a doctoral candidate at the Luxembourg Center of Systems Biomedicine, the LCSB. So my first question, why is science communication important to you? Um, science communication, for me, it's a great tool to convey sometimes complex or complicated uh, topics about research or science in general to a broader audience. In this audience could be students or even patients and simply everybody interested in research and science. Um, furthermore, I think it's a great opportunity to present the actual science done here in, in Luxembourg to, yeah, to promote this a bit and make people aware of it. And not last but not least, also to spark interest in, uh, science, in science and research in the next generation. <coughs> Can you tell us a bit more about the production of the comic or your comic in general, maybe? Yes, sure. So um, it was a long but also really fun process. So in the beginning, we learned a lot about comics and science comics uh, in particular. We did some creative exercises to get used to the topic uh, before we actually uh, went into smaller groups and developed our own um, science comic ideas. So I personally was in a group with three other students uh, also coming from the biomedical field, namely Anuk, Anna and Shupra. And it was quite from the beginning clear that we wanted to have um, some kind of talking cells from the human body explaining some uh, um, biological mechanism, for example. And uh, in the beginning we wanted to include all of our favorite cells, but we soon realized we couldn't fit all of them in a two-page comic. So we had to make some choices, um, but we had many ideas, for example, Stemmy the stem cell, um, Marco the macrophage or Betty the B cell, so all kinds of immune cells, for example. And in the end, we decided to put the spotlight on uh, Mirko, we, who is the microglia cell, an immune cell of the brain. And we tell the story about he might be involved in, um, in Alzheimer's disease, how he could contribute to the disease progression. And how did you like working together with an artist? So this was clearly the most exciting part because we could, after a long time, finally see our uh, characters and our story come real, become alive. And um, so our group worked together with um, Andy Gainen and he did an amazing job in implementing all of our uh, special wishes about color choices or background. Um, and most important, of course, to conveying the scientific messages in a very appealing and fun looking uh, way. Thank you very much, Sonia, for being here with us today. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our last speaker for today. Let's say hello to Andy Gainen. <laughs> so Andy, it's not the first science comic that you're doing. Was it challenging nevertheless? Well, it's every time it's a new challenge because each subject is different, so I always have to first get into the subject. So uh, normally when you do a comic, you have to re research yourself, but here I was handed the, the research by the doctorate candidates, and, um, but still I had to get into the subject to understand it myself in order to make a story that other people can understand. So um, yeah, it was a fun challenge. And how did you like collaborating with the scientists? It really was a great collaboration because they were... Um, at the beginning I didn't know what to expect from them because when you haven't done any comics before it can be quite irritating because um, 
you just don't only write a story, but you have to write a story that's possible to put into into two pages it, it, in this case. So um, what they did was to hand me a script right from the start that was really publishable. I could have done a comic out of it. Just the problem is that sometimes it was a bit too, too long. So I had to cut it down in some spaces and um, to find the right balance between telling a story and talking about scientific facts. Because if you just concentrate on the story, you don't vehicle any scientific concepts or ideas. And if you just concentrate on scientific facts, you just illustrate scientific facts and that's not fun. So the real challenge was to find the balance between the two and put it into two pages each time. And can you tell us maybe any interesting behind the scenes stories? <laughs> Well, in the solar cell story, I, well, the story is placed in, in two uh, different worlds, like the dream world, where Lenny has a, a dream, like a nightmare, and then the real world. And to separate the two worlds, I took a little graphic trick that in the dream world, the characters, they all have four fingers, like uh, three fingers and one thumb. And in the real world, they have four fingers and one thumb. So. When you read the story, you may not see it, but now that you know, just have a look at it and you see that the number of fingers changes from one world to the other. In fact. And maybe you will also find out some other Easter eggs that we dropped. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Ginn, and for joining us today.